You know, when I relaunched this podcast, I made the comment to say that I was going to treat this as a space where I would put the things that weren't appropriate for my usual YouTube videos somewhere. And well, I'm going to definitely be testing that premise here with today's episode. You got some ASMR as I crack open a favorite flavor of Worcester water here. And yeah, I had some things I wanted to talk to you guys about today because it's been a rough couple of weeks here on the farm and uh, I feel like I have a bit of a confession to make. So these last couple of weeks here on the farm have been very difficult for me. Um, it's been, I don't know, maybe just a little bit over two weeks because my beloved barn cat, Molly Barn Cat, aka Molly Murder Mittens, has gone missing. And it's always difficult when you have a barn cat go missing because it usually starts with, like, you know, you just notice that the cat doesn't turn up during dinner time. Or actually, it was in the case of Molly's situation, it was breakfast time, where I saw her the night before, and she was happy, and she was her usual self, and she seemed healthy and fine. And the next morning when I went outside, you know, usually she's the first barn cat to greet me, and she wasn't there. And then she didn't show up for breakfast. And then later that day, she didn't show up for dinner. And then that next day, same pattern, no breakfast, no dinner. And then before I knew it, three days had gone by and Molly Barncat was gone. And for me, that's usually the point when I start to panic and get concerned. Come on, Ginny. Ginny Barncat's here with me. She's debating, trying to come up on my lap. There you go. Ginny Barncat, in case you're wondering, she's actually Molly Barncat's daughter. Uh, you know, we have three outdoor barn cats, or at least we had three outdoor barn cats in Pablo Barncat, who is the first animal we ever got on the farm, and he showed up here in February of 2018. And then we have Ginny, and we had Molly. We also have Lil Barncat, who was an outdoor barn cat, but she got hit by a car back in 2020, and ever since that happened, she has been an indoor house cat and really my constant office companion, which has been very nice. Ginny. <laughs> I'm sorry, if you guys are watching the version of this podcast, you're probably seeing the craziness go on as Ginny keeps bouncing back and forth and she just knocked over one of the cameras. <laughs> but I don't know, I digress with Ginny's cuteness distracting me because it really has been a difficult time. You know, Molly Barncat had been gone for a couple of days. I started to put the word out to my neighbors and to my friends and, you know, posted in the local Facebook group and posted on Front Porch Forum, which, if you know from our last episode, is kind of the standard place where you do that sort of thing here in Vermont. And no luck, no sign. And uh, yeah, that went on for about a week. I was just sort of looking, searching. I would go out after doing my morning chores and just drive around the area hoping to catch a glimpse maybe or see, you know, a dead body on the side of the road or something. And uh, yeah, no luck at all. And it was really unfortunate. And uh, yeah, I think at this point I've kind of resigned to the fact that she's not coming back. You know, you know, this hasn't been the first time that Molly's ever disappeared. You know, she actually earlier this summer went away for a couple of days but came back. But I don't know. For whatever reason, this feels, I don't know, much more permanent. And I don't think she's coming back. And I think she's gone and she's left the farm forever. And I don't know what happened. I don't know if she's gotten eaten by a coyote or some other wild animal. I don't know if she got hit by a car maybe. I don't know if some folks found her and said, oh, wouldn't she be a wonderful cat for our house? And since Molly Barncat's such a friendly barn cat, she just ended up there. I don't know. All of those are potential scenarios, and I don't know which one has happened. And, uh, you know, that first week when she was gone, every time I would think about her, I'd break out crying. It took me uh, three separate days to film the video, uh, Molly Murder Mittens is Missing. I don't know if you guys saw that. I put it out... Um, I guess Saturday, so almost a week from when this podcast is coming out. It took me three days to shoot that video. And then I have had uh, several more days after that that I haven't been able to shoot videos. Like I just can't bring myself to go out there and do like a normal like morning chores type of video, which is, you know, probably at least half of the videos I make. But uh, there's just been something about it where I just spiral into this grief and depression Every time I think about it, because, 
don't know. I mean, the answer is pretty simple and clear. It's because I miss Molly and I'm grieving, I, I think is really what it came down to. But I, I've never had a situation where I've struggled so hard to like shoot videos. Like, I don't know. I, I, I've tried and tried and I feel like the last couple of videos I've shot, and I don't know if you guys notice, and feel free to tell me in the comments of this podcast or the pod comments of, of those videos, but I uh, don't feel like my videos have been very good lately. I feel like I've been just low energy and not my usual self, and I'm really struggling. And part of me says that, hey, that's okay. That's just me showing up as my authentic self, and I'm just coming as I am, and my goal has always been just to be honest in these videos, and that's me being honest, but if I'm going to get even a next level of honest here with you guys, uh, if videos weren't helping me pay the bills, I probably would have just flat out stopped making videos for the last couple of weeks, and uh, I don't know. I, d I don't have the creative inspiration and energy that I typically do when I have those videos, you know? Whoa, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Again, Ginny's just knocking crap over here. <laughs> uh, I'm so grateful for her chaotic energy. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't how I don't know how any other way to say this, but I have entered into a relatively, I don't know, I don't know how deep I'd say, but I'm I'm definitely depressed right now. There's no no doubt about it. I'm depressed and I'm grieving and I'm really sad. And I know there's going to be folks who hear this podcast and be like, oh my God, would you listen to this guy? Just why won't he shut up? Just keep this stuff to yourself. But again, back to my point of the purpose of this podcast is to kind of dive deeper on things that wouldn't typically be interesting or appropriate for a normal YouTube video. And, and so that's what I'm doing here. And I'm talking to you about it almost more for myself to sort of document how I'm feeling. Because I haven't been this sad in a very long time. I think I, I don't think I've been this sad since uh, I thought Lil Barncat was dead. I mean, if I really think back to it, I, it's funny that as a non-cat person, to have the two most profound depths of sadness that I've felt in the last couple of years be related to dead or missing cats, I don't know. I don't know. I don't quite know what that says about me. <laughs> But it is what it is. I think, though, the, the interesting thing is just how much of the, the sense that I have of like, hey, things just need to continue on and I need to keep moving on it, it, that I'm, I'm struggling with and actually getting that energy and just doing it. Usually I'm the type who's like, OK, whatever, I can handle it and, and just move past it. And, you know, whether it's sort of bury those feelings of grief d deep down and ignore them or find sort of more destructive ways to deal with them. I, I think that that's what comes down to, you know, I, I made a video earlier this year talking about my binge eating disorder and how I very much historically used things like food and eating way too much food as a way to deal with stress, as a way to deal with sadness, as a way to deal with anxiety. Even right now, I find myself wanting to do those things and go back to those behaviors and I've been like journaling like a madman. I've been, you know, recording it and talking about it in videos like this one, which I don't know, as I'm doing all of this, I'm not even sure I'm going to let this whole thing see the light of day. But I'm finding that just kind of talking about the feelings and getting in touch with the feelings is forcing me not to do the destructive things, but at the same time, it doesn't make me feel any better. In fact, sometimes it almost makes me feel worse. You know, I was reading this uh, quote by somebody the other day talking about how you should always stop to play with your pets because they might be your best and closest friend for a very short period of your life, but you're their best friend and, and human for the entirety of their lives. And, you know, you think of a dog or a cat and, I don't know, lives 10 years, maybe 20 years if you're lucky. You know, and a human, I don't know, 80 plus years if you're lucky. You know, that overlap isn't insignificant, but I've had several cats and dogs over the years in my life. And I think of the cats and dogs I have now. 
And it just flat out wrecks me to think about them not being here. You know, the disappearance of Molly Barncat is significant on this farm because really she's the first dog or cat that we've lost since we started the farm back in 2018. You know, like I said, Pablo was the first one to show up. Lil showed up in, uh, I guess it was, I think it was June of 2018. Lil almost died in, uh, I guess it was July of 2020, just about somewhere around there. But other than that, we've been extremely lucky. You know, the dogs have been overall very healthy. There hasn't been any issues, and they're also both relatively young. Uh, Pablo, I worry about as he gets a little bit older, and he's almost into double digits, but I don't know, he still seems like he's doing pretty gosh darn well. Lil, yeah, she had that close call, but I don't know. She's probably the safest of all of our animals now that she lives in the house. But I definitely worry about my animals in a significant way. You know, I've gotten used to having a chicken die or a duck or a goose die or, you know, even having one of my cattle sending them off to be slaughtered or if I had a, one of my cattle get sick and something happened to them, it would be a bummer and I would be very unhappy, but I don't feel like I'd be feeling the, the, the sense of the sense of grief that I feel right now. And again, this is a couple weeks after the fact and I'm still feeling this and it really does make me wonder how am I going to process things as they get worse over the years and when I do lose more animals because I will. I like that's an inevitability. And I don't know. It just really hurts to think about it. And when I look at the problems that I've been having lately of trying to shoot videos and not feeling like I've got it, I feel like the reason is because all I want to talk about is this, like this sense of sadness and, and dread that I feel right now. And, and I know it's not appropriate to just constantly dwell like this and it's not healthy and I imagine for you guys watching videos like that, it's probably wildly boring and depressing at the same time and, and not what you tune in for. <sighs> but it's how I feel. And, and sometimes coming to a connection with how you feel can make all the difference in whether or not you're going to process that sadness and whether or not you're going to be able to move forward in the right way. And the more I think about it, the more I realize that I need to just, I don't know, soak in this. And so, <laughs> well, about 60 seconds into hitting record uh, as I tried to record this podcast, I was regretting it. I don't know. Maybe I'm feeling a little bit better about it now. My thoughts often turn to Molly and, and thinking about ways to commemorate her and and keep her with me and I don't I don't know if I have a good one yet I know I'll definitely write a book about her at some point you know uh as the Toby as the Toby Dog book just came out this past week which felt like a milestone and an accomplishment that's just been completely masked in all the sadness that I feel and I, I haven't really celebrated it at all because I've been so, I don't know, just feeling so down. I realized that that book is sort of like a, a time capsule of the farm. And it, it sort of captures everything in just a way. And as I'm working on the next book right now, which is really mostly about Lil Barncat and her accident... You know, I'm getting my head into that place. And I know in a few years, definitely not right now, but in a few years, I will sit back and sort of process how I feel about Molly and try to capture her story. I'll probably also make a video about her in, at some point, but I'm just still not ready for it. I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> like, and, and I know, this is, again, people who are not necessarily fans of mine but listen to these things or watch these things, and I know that there's a fair amount of folks who fall into that category of hate watching, um, they're probably rolling their eyes as they hear me talk about this right now. But again, this is, this is just you know, trying to document how I'm feeling about this and how I'm trying to get through this because it sucks and 
These have been some of the saddest days on the farm over the last week or so. But yeah, I will make a Molly Murder Mittens video at some point, kind of telling her whole story. I just, yeah, I need more time to process it. I don't know. And maybe I keep hoping that she still shows up and that that action wouldn't be necessary. You know, I once had uh, a storytelling uh, person... Or, I'm trying to think where I saw this quote. I don't think anybody told it. I think I read it somewhere. I don't know. But the quote is basically to say that you should tell stories about scars and not wounds, meaning that if you have an active wound, you probably shouldn't try to stop and tell a story about it just yet. You need time to process, put things in perspective, and heal up a little bit. And you can look back and see that scar, that, that wound left, and, and maybe that would be the time that you tell that story. But don't try to tell it while you're still actively treating a wound. And yeah, my heart is definitely wounded right now. Oftentimes my thoughts go to what could I or should I have done differently with Molly, whether I should have tried to actively look for her that first day that she didn't show up. And I don't necessarily think that that would have made any sense. I mean, the barn cats don't show up for a meal all the time. Like Pablo and Ginny especially, they they would often skip meals and just, you know, not show up one morning and be off hunting. They probably caught something, so they weren't all that interested in food. And so I don't stress about it. And even after a second one, I think that that's there. And the reality is the barn cats are probably the animals, much more so than the dogs, that are most vulnerable. Just that they are wandering. There are predators out there that could eat them. We live very, very close to the road. And so the idea of a cat getting hit by a car crossing the road is, is a definite risk. And I wish there was something I could do different. But, you know, if I put a fence up, cats are just going right over that fence or around that fence. And so there's no practical way to, like, fence the cats away from getting there. I've tried experimenting with like, you know, moving their feeding stations and, and trying to get them to stay in a different spot, but that never works. People have suggested that I put like GPS collars on them, but I worry about them getting strangled because it's such a strangulation risk. And most of those GPS collars have like a, a 48 hour uh, time limit before they die. And so I would basically be changing a collar every single day to ensure that I have an active collar for when the cat does disappear. So all in all, I don't know. I feel like maybe some of the risk that I have with my barn cats is just the inherent risk of having barn cats because the barn cats do play a very necessary role on our farm in terms of the rodent control and, and what they do. And if I didn't let them go outside and I didn't let them free range the way they do, I don't think I'd have much luck in having them help out with our rodent problem. And so, I don't know, I, I, I guess I'm coming to the conclusion that this is just the cost of doing business. And so, you know, especially as I have Ginny here hopping up on my lap again, and hopefully she won't knock over the camera. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I guess the thing that I, I've got to recognize is that, you know, that's a risk that I'm always going to have to contend with. And, you know, consistently being worried about Pablo and Ginny's safety is... It's part of the deal, and and that sucks and that hurts. I don't know. I've 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 thought so much about this one over the last two weeks, and and haven't been able to come up with a better answer. I don't have any plans on getting another barn cat anytime soon. I've always found that either two or three cats is kind of like the magic number for the farm, and so especially because we're about to enter into winter, I don't want to try to add anybody. Um, I don't know, maybe in a year or so I will. I, don't, I, I just don't even know. But at this stage of the game, I have no plans on adding a new cat. And the the barn cat team is now down to Pablo and Ginny. And they are our barn cats. And yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's all I can say about that one. I think the other thing that I've been thinking a lot about lately, and hopefully I don't get too choked up as I talk about this one, uh, but <clears throat> I think about if other animals pass, how will I feel and how do I not fall into kind of the, the crippling depression that I feel like I've been falling into these last two weeks here. And I don't know if I have a good answer, 
But again, part of me feels like maybe I shouldn't have a good answer because part of me feels like, you know, isn't this like the point of life? Like the idea of having an animal that you love so much that you just break down crying and lose it when you think about them being gone. (laughs) I don't know. Part of me feels like that's the point of life. Like, isn't the point of life to just see how, how to make the world a better place and how much love you can spread and how much love you can have in your heart? And when you lose someone or an animal that you're really close to, the hurt that you feel, it sucks. There's, there's few things that feel worse. In fact, I can't think of anything that feels worse. But at the same time, it sort of feels like it might be an indication to me of, of doing something right. Where I think back to times in my life where I was a lot less happy on a day-to-day basis, not like in a situation like I've been in since Molly. But when I think about those times, I had very few people and very few creatures that I, I loved and cared for deeply. And with that less love in my heart, I think I was a lot less happy. But since I've started letting these critters into my life and into my heart, I've been so much happier. But the the sadness I feel right now is just sort of the cost of doing business. And maybe the mark of a life well lived is just how many times you've been absolutely devastated by the death of death of something or someone that you love. Because that just shows you that you're doing it right. I don't know. Take that for what it's worth. <laughs> I was really hoping I wasn't going to have this crying episode. Oop. I knocked the camera down again. <laughs> and the reason that the camera keeps getting knocked down is because I have like my microphone cord or the headphones hooked into the mic thing and that's hooked into the camera. It's, I don't know, it's a whole thing. I think one final thought I will leave you guys with is this. Molly's fate is uncertain. While I'm pretty certain that she's not coming back, I don't know what happened to her. And I'm basically using that as an opportunity to craft a happy ending for her. Where some old lady who probably needed her more than I did saw her scratch at her back door and said, Oh, look at this pretty kitty. And Molly being Molly... Rolled over on her back and exposed her belly, and the lady gave her her rub, and the lady took her in and made her a house cat. And it sucks that I don't have my cat anymore, but it leaves me feeling happy to know that she's in a better place. And sometimes that's really all you can ever ask for. So thanks for listening, everybody. I really promise that next week's episode will be way, way, way more upbeat. But sometimes you just need to talk. There's nothing wrong with that. It's got a soul, this hero farm. It falls asleep inside my arms. We walk the fields under the stars. But love is here, gold shall farm.